Hi, how is everybody? It is Paul from Magpie 24 7 and uh, yeah, hot on the heels of another abysmal, shocking, deluded, pathetic, gutless performance against Aston Villa is a home time, tea time appointment with Leeds and uh, oh goodness me, as if the fact that they tonked us, uh, what, 5-2 isn't fresh in the mind, we've got to attempt to take on Leeds, who have folded probably since they've had a couple of um, defeats, they've been missing a few players, they haven't played for about 10 days-ish, something like that at this point, 9 or 10 days, so they're coming to this game a little bit refreshed, and um, yeah, we come into it on the back of yet more of the same, copy and paste football, it's diabolical, it's shite, it's one shot on target, it's no shots in the second half when you're 2-0 down. It's turgid, it's awful. It follows Steve Bruce getting even pettier, calling out um, you know, icons of the club, calling out Eddie Howe, calling out uh, the written journalist because you know he doesn't shirk things. He doesn't shirk things, he doesn't shirk the problems at Newcastle. He deals with it. But he has blocked all of the written press. The man's an absolute hypocrite on top of a galah and a useless piece of shit. Even Mrs. Bruce can't like Mr. Bruce at the moment. And she's probably the only fucker who wants him to keep the Newcastle job because at the end of the day she is gonna want to want gonna want him underneath her feet because I bet he is as annoying and useless at home as he is in the dugout. And uh, yeah Normally, at least you'd get through for a Saturday or Sunday before Steve Bruce absolutely, totally, and utterly ruined your week. Today is going to ruin your week nice and early as you're eating your, your tea. You can't even enjoy your fucking tea in peace. So, ruin your week on a Tuesday because I just cannot see us. I, I can't see Newcastle where not only our next win's coming from, but where our next fucking goal's coming from, if I'm being totally honest. We looked against Aston Villa. It wasn't even pre-season friendly um, tempo. It was abysmal. And if he saw encouraging signs on that, I recommend the daft bastards gets to Barnet Castle or gets to Respect Savers and gets his eyes tested. Because I saw fuck all that encouraged me. All I saw was relegation looming, long runs with no victories, no goals, and that's it. We're a team that can't defend. Um, you know, Dalos had one or two little hiccups uh, recently. The defence, uh, I think, looked pretty <sighs> lacklustre, and the fact that our centre midfielder, our best and probably only decent centre midfielder, looked our best defender, is also rather worrying. Our midfield is fucking abysmal. I've seen pub teams who've got better central midfield partnerships than what we've got. And to further compound that, some of Steve Bruce's selections, i.e. Hendricks and fucking Shelby, are beyond heads gone. They really, really are. Uh, it's pissing me right off. It makes a big thing out of Sean not playing. Yeah, he's, he's, it's a selection thing, it's a selection thing, it's a selection thing. It's a selection thing! That's what he was fucking shouting at his press conference. I couldn't give a shit. He's been out of form for so, so long that unless we're going to get the real uh, Sean Longstaff and he's going to play in his proper position, there's actually probably no point in being in. The question mark I do have over our midfield selection at the moment, of course, is Matty Longstaff, who's thrown in against the big boys or the so-called top six elite. But then when it comes to other games that he may be able to affect more, he's nowhere to be seen or he's on the bench. So, you know, with all that said, it'll probably be Shelby and Hendrick again because Steve Bruce saw nothing wrong. Yes, nothing wrong against Aston Villa. I saw nothing right. I must admit, so I must be watching another game. At the same time, he saw a midfield creating chances, this, that and the other. He talked a lot about um, Getting our best players on, on you know, on, on the park and available. So he talked about uh, getting Alan St. Maximum and Ryan Fraser out on the wings. And yeah, I do agree. We need them back, most definitely. But to say that you've not had them previously 
is again absolute waffle shit from the man who is the pure definition, if you look under the dictionary, of waffle shit, that's Steve Bruce. You know, the, the written press are probably grateful that they don't have to put up with his level of shite and incompetence. But, yeah, again, more question marks than, 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 than answers. The press conference was another farce. Like I say, written press not allowed in, but contractually he's had to do a press conference uh, because the club don't want to get in trouble, don't want to get fined, and don't have to spend any money. Goodness fucking knows. But going over the press conference, yes, he confirmed that the lad from uh, Bournemouth is virtually uh, home host and dried. Geordie Lad from Gateshead is going to come in to try and coach the coaches, give a little bit more uh, support to his fellow coaches uh, who have been stretched because of the COVID situation. Quite a few of them not well, missing. Um, so he confirmed that, confirmed that Ben Dawson, who probably arguably our best coach at the club, who's obviously remit is the younger kids at the club, but he's going to be with the first team for the rest of the season, all hands uh, to, you know, battle stations. He talked about Newcastle having one or two, again, it's, it's so tired, it's unbelievable. Um, having one or two things in the old um, Milton pot, you know, a couple of irons in the fire, all that sort of thing. We've got a few things that we're working on. Loan deals, obviously, because we haven't got two pence to fucking rub together. Um, it is so gotten. He talked about injuries, Federico Fernandez, Kieran Clark, Paul Dummett. Surprise, surprise, the man who's continuously injured at the moment. They all miss out. And it's, it's, it's strange, touching on Paul Dummett, that a player who's been out for nearly a year has to play twice in the space of a week. And uh, plus extra time, wasn't it? And then he gets himself injured again. Hmm. Florian Lejeune 2.0? Because this is exactly what happened to Florian Lejeune. Never recuperated and has had to spend a, a year out on loan to get over being bruised. The same thing's happen happening to Paul Dummett, who's a, he's a decent central left footed defender on his day. But how often is, is he unavailable? And he's unavailable again. Kieran Clark also uh, should be back short. The Federico Fernandez may be a little bit further because he's got an issue with his hamstrings and stuff, I believe. Uh, certainly a leg injury that's going to keep him out for maybe a, a week or two. So we're going to be stretched defensively, no doubt about it. Um, I hope he doesn't play 3 5 2. I pray he doesn't play fucking 3. Well, 3 5 2. I know what I fucking meant. 5 3 2. Um, whichever way you want to look at it, or 5 4 1. I hope and pray that we are not playing five at the back because it's Leeds who do ship goals and aren't the best defensively at home and, and again we talk about opportunities to get points this is an opportunity to get points we can't keep passing up the likes of Sheffield United uh, Fulham's of this world we're Sproms of this world and not taking full advantage of who we are playing against so we've got to go for it today. I would play four at the back, which probably means Steve Bruce will play five. He's also touched upon the fact on his press conference. No uh, Yedlin. Obviously, they forgot to fill in the paperwork. He's probably going to be off to Galatasaray or somewhere, in all honesty. Um, Mankio is rated 50-50. Rushed him back. He's played 90 minutes after playing no football for what, a couple of months. And now he's rated 50-50. So you'd imagine... It's going to be Emil Kraft uh, at the right side of the defence. And uh, the only other option we've probably got is Jacob Murphy, which if he plays five at the back, I wouldn't be against because at least he does offer you stuff going forward and uh, does have a goal in him. Uh, but yeah, I think Bruce will go five at the back. I would pray that he goes four at the back and throws the extra body forward because we've got to score goals to get ourselves out of the shit. And we don't look like we're going to do it at the moment. Midfield, I don't expect them making much changes, if I'm honest, uh, with Shelby and Jeff Hendrick, who he seems to absolutely have a man crush and a half on, because nobody else seems to get a look in. Uh, personally, I'd have had um, Matty 
And I'm, and I'm at Isaac Hayden, and there's a two in the middle there, because I think they're, they're our best two midfielders uh, presently. Yeah, it, it is what it is, but that to me is our, be our best two, but I, I don't think that Steve Bruce will go for our best two. I think he'll go for his favourite two, his pin-up boys, as it were. Um, I would be tempted to throw Alan St. Maximum straight back in. I would, but... Again, he's been out so so long that you you've got to you've got to handle him very sensitively, very carefully. So I can't imagine him playing at, uh, at all tonight. Obviously, yeah, off the bench, yes, he will come in off the bench. There's no doubt about that. But he'll be on the bench to start off with. Uh, Ryan Fraser, he has been stop. He has been start. He has been in. He has been out. He's been sent off. He's had an awful time at Newcastle, and to be fair, he finished Bournemouth when he finished up his time up there, again, nursing an injury. So, I think now may be the time to, to put him in. I'd like to see Miggy played in a more central position, where he can affect play, uh, and then hopefully that combined with the famous 20 or 30 yards further forward that Bruce Key's promising will mean in, in some uh, goals for Newcastle. On what the other side, one thing I do want to stress about tonight, I don't want to see fucking Joe Linton anywhere near this team. It's as bad as me seeing right now. I would put Christian Atsu back in the 25 and drop Joe Linton. Things are that fucking bad that I'd rather do that than suffer any more of this absolute galah. And speaking of galahs, as much as he's a, a good lad and a good laugh, a character, I wouldn't want Andy Carroll in. Because at the end of the day, we're not a team that's crossing the ball in. Now, if we were a team that was knocking the ball in from all angles, I'd say get Andy Carroll in there for, you know, he can cause havoc, but we're not. So I would really like to see Dwight Gale. I don't see what the issues and problems is and why he hasn't played very much recently. And obviously partnered with Callum Wilson, who can always get you a goal. We're going to need to keep leads out because I don't think we score more than one or two goals. Maximum, and I mean maximum. That's me being very, very generous because in reality, I'm sitting there thinking we won't score any fucking goals. So at least if we keep it fucking out of the back, we'll at least get a fucking point and stop the rot. But we need more than that today. So I am looking at Callum Wilson and, and thinking we need a performance out of Callum Wilson. We need him facing the right way. We need him making those little runs that he was making earlier in the season. And we need players around who are giving them confidence to make those runs. Because it's all right Callum Wilson making those runs if our uh, foot, uh, if the rest of his teammates and the rest of the Newcastle players aren't getting forward closer to him and getting the balls to him, there's no point in making the run. And he must be so frustrated. Because there's no doubt he's a quality thing. If you give him a chance, he'll get you a goal. Um, but tonight, we have to dictate it. We have to boss the possession. We have to get this famous 20 or 30 yards further up the pitch. And it's all right, Bruce chatting shit in his press conferences, but we want to see a little bit of proof in the pudding. Yeah? So if Newcastle can do that, we stand a chance. If we don't, we will get destroyed off Leeds. And I am fearful because Leeds will exploit our weaknesses. There's no doubt about that. So it's a case of shitting yourself once again watching Newcastle. Uh, I just hope and pray at the end of it, regardless to whatever happens in the 90 minutes, we come out with a victory because that is all important. Because if you don't, games will very, very quickly run out. And again, if we lose, which is what I'm expecting, you're probably expecting, most of the fan base, 99% of the fan base, is expecting a defeat tonight. Um then as, then as Mick Law said on the Steve Rafe uh, interview that he did recently, I would expect him to be relieved of his duties tonight if he doesn't do it because how long must we put up with this thing? Uh, how long can we stomach all these defeats? How long can we take the risk of defeat after defeat after defeat? One goal in nearly 800 minutes. A witless run stretching into double fucking figures. It's embarrassing as hell. It really, really is, and it's alarming as hell, as, as hell. So, yeah, we're in a mess. No idea what formation 
we could do but I, I, I really want us to try and maybe go like a 4-2-3-1 uh, something like that to get those three players right up right supporting um, Callum Wilson and what I don't want to see is what I saw against Villa Park when the second go uh, goal of theirs went in cracking the thing is tidy thing is but when that goal was scored all ten of our outfield players were in our own box Pen, but it's pathetic it's so limp it's so defeatist by Newcastle at the time we need to be braver bolder tonight we need more action and a little less conversation a little bit Elvis Presley that's what we probably need and he could probably do a better job than Steve Bruce could let's uh, let's face it somebody said to me earlier today would you have Frank Lombard I says as, as manager of Newcastle when I've been out and about today I says Frank Lombard I said let's stop his hand off for his fucking missus to be on the touchline at the moment I says because she couldn't do any worse of a job than what this Galar's doing that's for certain fucking hell man the club is in a mess it really fucking is in a mess like but Fingers crossed, we can do it, we need to. <laughs> because, yeah, Fulham are coming and they've got, I think, um, have they got something like West Brom and Brighton. They've got two very winnable games in the next game. The pressure could be really on if we do not get the result tonight. So, yeah, cross everything, get your prayer mats, get everything out, park everything that you can do. Pray to whatever God that you believe in. Get your tea wolf down, try not to bring it up, and hopefully later on tonight uh, we're bringing positive news for a fucking change. Anyway, take care, keep it tuned, I'll speak to you later, and hopefully we'll be a lot, lot happier. Take it easy, everyone.